a lot of stuff I already knew, which it's not like I'm trying to be like snobby about it and like throwing people's faces, but it's like I, I know this stuff. I was like, I grew up around it, but it's all I know. So I was like, do you own a business? Have you ever ran a business? You're teaching me this. And like, you, it's coming from a book, and it, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but have you actually done this? No. So you finally decide that you're going to take action on an idea, but you don't have a network. You don't have a community. You're basically a nobody. So what do you do? How do you get people to respond to you? How do you get influencers to actually look at you, to respond to you, to have a conversation with you? It's episode 68 of the 1004 show. And today we have Ryan Dean of Dreamer Made. You guys can check them out at dreamermade.com. It's episode 68 of the 1004 show. We talked to Ryan about just that, how to go from nobody to somebody when you don't have that network yet. If you guys are interested, which I know you are, keep listening. Just say, I'm super excited to be here. I'm Zach Miller. I mean, I can't blame you there. Yeah. It's like a dream come true. I understand why people would have this as a dream. I mean, sometimes physically being able to see me is is not possible. But, you know, this is like the second the second best thing. It's, it's like a participation trophy at this point. <laughs> what do you think about participation trophies? <sighs> I don't think I got any. I don't know. Do you, do you think the world is a little like weird about that now where like everyone wants to be, get a participation trophy instead of like winning like does winning still matter to you yeah I, I think it it depends on what it is and that what age like if it's everyone starting out and like okay why did they get a trophy when they didn't do anything like oh that kid didn't even show up like mm. but they're part of the group so i can see it de- like depending on the age group and what it's for you know it's really interesting that we're talking about participation trophies because if you really think about it, the the tool, the platform that you've built, Dreamer Made, you guys can check it out, dreamermade.com. Participation matters. Yeah. Right? And so if you don't participate, you likely aren't going to be able to fulfill whatever those next steps and in, in, in dreams are in, in many cases. And so ha- tell me a little bit about Dreamer Made and how do you get people to actually participate? So really it's trying to connect people with something they're passionate about. So finding that common goal, something like a project where they're like, oh, I really am into this, whether it's something for uh, just something creative, they're like, oh, I want to build a solar powered, like a car, kit car for my uh, like family member, like my nephew, something like that, or even something for the community, just finding that common ground um, and really unifying people that way. And uh, also tapping into you know, people they're looking for fulfillment. They're looking for a way to use their skills, get recognized. So just trying to tap into the, you know, what we do every day, but put it online and actually put towards a common goal. You came up with this idea because you kind of were challenged by it yourself a few years ago. What's the backstory? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of been in the works for a while. Um, I've always come up with ideas and, never really followed through. I got to a certain point and like, okay, I don't have resources. I don't have expertise in a certain area. So I was like, what if there's a way we can actually you know, make this you know, combine it and actually have a place online for people to connect and use their skills together. Um, but I was actually developing a self-defense aid and that's when I, I really realized I put some money into it and I said, like, okay, I don't have any more money to give. Like I can't put anything else towards it. I worked with a patent attorney, got the um, preliminary patent search completed, came back successful. So it's okay. There's nothing else out there like this. Got some uh, mock-ups and some renderings done. Even had some CAD files made up of the product. And it was really production ready. But it's like, okay, to that point, if you don't have any more funds, how can this project get to the next step? It's kind of just staying there idle, waiting for something. So it either stays there and nothing happens or... Maybe you get some money down the road where you can put towards it. Is, is it still just stagnant and sitting there, basically? No. So the cool thing is it's actually on Dreamer Made, and that was one of the things I'm trying to include people in. So when I'm connecting with people on the platform, I'm like, oh, if you're interested in this, and since I put money towards it, that's kind of the beauty of it. I want a platform that 
it doesn't have to be all open. Like you can have it where it's protected and you don't have to share everything because like this project right here, I put a couple grand into at least. And it's like, I like to keep some of the intellectual property and not just put it out there. I'd like to protect it make sure it's going the right path. Um, so I get to choose as a creator how that's made. Because a lot of people are terrified of that, right? Whether or not your IP is going to be stolen or not, whether or not your idea is going to be stolen or not, a lot of people are terrified of that. So, so when someone says that to you, like, oh, my idea, I don't want it to be stolen, well, what's your response? So my idea... I mean, yeah, nobody wants their idea to be stolen. And so that's why with DreamMate, I actually made it where like the projects are secret by default. So when you create something, you're not going to put it out there to the world. Um, there's plenty of ideas I have that I'm free to, like, I'll give freely. I'm like, okay, I'm probably never going to do anything with it. But if something happens, like, I still want to see it made. So if something happens and someone makes it, that's awesome. It'd be nice to have a little bit of credit of, oh, it originated here and it took off. So as far as like this, it's just showing people, I, I like to say, you know, everyone has different ideas. If you're working on something, you put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it, you might not want to share it with everyone. That's perfectly understandable. I have projects like that myself. But there's other projects I give away freely, other ideas I'm happy to, to share. Do you think that, I like what you said. So do you think that people who have an idea really just want it to be done and it could be just a good way for you to say, hey, I have this idea. Dreamer made a platform where you can at least talk it through. Because, I mean, ultimately, I, I don't have as many ideas as maybe I used to because I don't think that way anymore because I think I'm, I'm super focused on, on certain things. But I used to have a lot of ideas too. And a lot of times it was just because I needed that thing to be made or I needed to find out where it could be. So do you think that ultimately, like, that could be a good resource for people like, Oh, maybe this is something I can do and, and, and I need it to be fixed. Or what do you think about kind of the idea of just getting something done? Definitely. Um, I've always kind of seen it as a, a way to encompass that. And that's where we kind of ran into some issues with what actually it is, how to find the platform, because I wanted it to be a place where you could, yeah, you could talk about your ideas, walk it you know, through, also get stuff made. So, I think definitely people want to just get the things made. So that's why we have steps. And so like, if you want to actually create, like I have a silk line t-shirt idea and I just wanted to, someone to help me sew it. Cause I don't know how to sew that well. Damon, so, Damon John does. You should call him up. I he should. was on episode 25 of the 1004 show. I don't know his number though. So I can't, I can't give it to uh, him. Well, Sorry. maybe he'll, he'll watch this later on and be like, exactly. Damn. Damon. Ryan so fine t-shirts coming out. Get on, uh, get on dreamermade.com. So uh, how do you define your platform then? So you said you've been trying to figure that out. You, you're not necessarily new into this. You're a few years into this now. But like, how often are you changing what you say uh, from a language perspective? And, and, and what is kind of what you're defining the platform today? Yeah, so we've been doing some A-B testing, um, trying to figure out exactly what's resonating with people. Because we started out saying we were a crowdsourcing uh, community and most people you know when they're searching for certain crowdsourcing things they understand it but what we are running into are people who are associating us with kickstarter and crowdfunding they're like we don't need another kickstarter it's like you're right we don't <laughs> that's not what this is this is using your skills to build a product or something a project versus giving money so we define it now as a collaborative marketplace and really connecting makers and creators to reach their, you know, their ideas full value. How many of those people that you were talking to do you think were the right fit? So I don't know if you ever heard me say this, but you're familiar with the bell curve where it's basically four quadrants. And um, I guess it's some percentages, uh, like let's just say it's 25, 25, 25, 25, just for the purpose of this. But 25% are early adopters, 25% are people that will never come on, and then a couple other ones you just need to convince, and then you get them over the hump. Like, when you're talking to these people and they don't get what you're saying, where do you think they are in that quadrant? Because I often, I often think that people are communicating with the wrong people, and so they're not in, like, that right quadrant, and that's why the trouble is there. So where do you think some of these people that were like, oh, we don't need another Kickstarter, were in that quadrant? And and what would you do to kind of 
it, like if you address that they were in the wrong place, do you what do you do with them kind of next if they're not the right fit? Mm -hmm. So um, well, some of those people, it kind of depends because I mean, yeah, this is for everyone because I believe everyone has an idea, but it's not targeting everyone. You can't you know, obviously go after everyone and make them understand it. So uh, with people who are familiar with like this was actually people who were starting a business and had uh, crowdfunding campaigns of their own, the Kickstarter campaigns. And I thought, okay, well, Kickstarter, this is kind of before Kickstarter. So I think there's some people where it definitely isn't the right fit. And it's a matter of finding it and kind of making it where it is the right market fit for them and explaining it to them the right way. Because sometimes, I mean, they'll say, oh, I have an idea. I don't know what to do. I'm like, perfect. I have the, you know, the solution for you. But still, they'll be like, I don't. It's just like kickstart when you go into those details. So if you don't know what they're actually trying to do, like if they don't get that hint of I have an idea I'm trying to make, that's where it gets tough with the message. Like, what do you do? Yeah. What what are, what are you personally best at? Like, what what's the best thing that Ryan Dean is best at? Oh, what am I best at? Question. I like a lot of the back office type stuff, uh, designing. So programming and designing, I really like, some people have said I'm, I'm kind of like a catalyst. I feel like I can get started on something and uh, maybe find a solution for someone to push them in the right direction. So that's what I think I'm best at. And you're very much self-taught in that world, right? Mm -hmm. How did you learn? Yeah. How did you start teaching yourself? How did you, you, I believe Dreamer Made is on Ruby on Rails. Like, how did you, do, how did you decide on that? Like, what's, what's the genesis of that? So that was actually, uh, I was in Alexandria at the time, and I just, uh, I, was, I was working on this, and I just lost my job, and that was a fun time. And I was like, you know, I could go back to the, like, the working world and work for someone else and make, you know, 40 grand and see if I can, you know, move up in the world, you know, uh, climb the corporate ladder. But I was like, I'd rather do something else. I'd rather pursue this idea of dreamer made but i had no idea how i was going to do it so uh, i was you know researching some different programming languages for ruby on rails you know twitter was built off of it a while back and like okay they say this is what a lot of these platforms are built off of so i'll do some research and i'll dive in i mean for the first it took a week for me to get the like you're on ruby like you're on rails and that screen i was banging my head against the desk because mm -hmm. I, I had no idea what i was doing so that was pretty, uh, pretty fun experience, but yeah, just taking it day by day and there's a lot of resources out there in the community. So let's, if you're looking to build something on uh, with the programming language, definitely make sure it has a nice community behind it. Uh, in Alexandria, losing your job, like, were you at that point thinking or had you been thinking like, oh, maybe I could be an entrepreneur, maybe I could build this? Like, where, where did that come into play like when did you start going oh i don't need to get another job i need to build my future so after i lost my job i actually started freelancing online and i was just one of those sites and i was like okay i can do this you know my friends do in <laughs> 10 days it's like i can do this i was you know talking myself up like all right i can get money by then i was like i have some graphic design background i have some project management background let me see what i can do so I, I set off to do that and got a few jobs. And it was actually when I ran into a project on there for someone that had a logo design already done. They just needed to change from white to black. And it's something simple if you have Photoshop and it takes less than a minute to do. And people were charging upwards of 120 bucks. It was ridiculous. I was like, here's this business owner. He's in there and he's like, I need this done. I know it only takes a few minutes. Like, yeah, if I would have put it up there, if I didn't see those $120 charges in bids, I would have put, you know, maybe 20 bucks, you know. That's what's, that's what's best on Fiverr too, is those quick exactly. fixes. Yeah. Um, but I mean, when I saw 120 bucks and like, that was the, the average type, I was like, this is kind of crazy. So I just did it real fast, sent it to the guy and said, Hey, if this is what you need, by all means, you know, it's free. You know, pay it forward. It's like, if not, my bad. <laughs> but he sent a reply saying, Oh my God, thank you so much. This is like means a lot. He's like, Because I was looking at his prices and I definitely couldn't justify it right now just to change the color of the logo. And he's like, You know, money's tight on my end. So 
I really appreciate it. And that right there kind of, you know, helped me realize that there's a potential out there for creating online without necessarily being solely focused on money. So if you want to get to the next step, it's not just dependent on having cash. Like if you want to just help someone, help them, or if you're passionate about what they're doing, there have to be another way to create. And that's what really set me off on that. So this is where people are listening and hearing so you don't make money, right? So you lose your job. You're building a tool now that you don't make money on. Like, how do you, how do, you do that? Like, what and, and, and how does Dreamer Made ultimately start making money? Mm-hmm. Yeah, great question. That's what everyone asks always when I present it. How do you make money? And I'm like, great, perfect. I do think, though, that sometimes, just before we, to preface this, you can build a big enough community and make money off of it. Right. So, so some people just are uneducated in that world. And there's plenty of businesses that don't make money that make a ton of money. So, but exactly. Yeah. So, um, after that, didn't make my rent and all that had to move back home with the family, took a hit there, but I believed in this and the need for it. So I was like, I'll take the hit for a few years. I'll develop this from home and see what happens. So I was doing stuff on the side. Um, doing odd jobs, you know, graphic design, but still trying to tie it in to Dreamer Made and bring people onto the platform. Say, hey, you know, I'll give you a discount if you use your project on Dreamer Made. If you, you know, if you need something designed uh, for your event, put it on Dreamer Made, invite me in, and I'll, you know, give you a, a nice discount just as a way to grow it. So as far as how it's going to make money, we've, like, looked at different options. We wanted everything to be free. We wanted to be... Like all the features, it's not going to be like really a free, uh, a premium type thing. We want everyone to have the same access, but um, with offering cash rewards because we have rewards associated to these steps. So like I said, if you want to have someone sew something for you, if you put you know fifty dollars on there, you're looking at doing transaction fees, and that's kind of difficult to explain to people um, how that ties into like, well, isn't that just like another freelancing platform then? But with that, it's more so, it's not the only option to create. It's giving more options. So like, if you want to create with money, awesome. If not, there's still a way for you to build. I also think as we're just talking through this, and I don't know a ton about Dreamer Made, um, you know, and, and your you know specific goals with it, but you could probably get some sort of sponsor that maybe someone is typically using um, or a tool that people use over and over and over again to sponsor something. Um, you know, you have a big enough community, people pay for anything. I was just shooting um, my TV show and we were talking about, um, apparently on Hulu, there's some Dana Carvey show where he used to, for like six or eight episodes, had a show and it, it had a different kind of sponsor every show. So A&W Root Beer, so and so. Like, if you have the community, if you have the crowd, people are interested in, in being there. I've done it plenty of times. You've probably seen stuff where it's like presented by or powered by XYZ Company someone's giving us money to say that right and so if you get enough people on there you can probably get someone to start providing you um, capital for that so living at home how old are you now 26 26 so you're not super old what was it like moving back in it was definitely an adjustment you know i moved from my own apartment or like a 800 square foot apartment and to my old room <laughs> to your like so, 100 square foot room <laughs> yeah so i was like room was just crazy filled with all my stuff. I was like, it's just temporary, you know? <laughs> but uh, it, it's been interesting. It's been nice because getting to connect with family, especially since uh, now we have some younger, I have nephews and stuff like that. Um, and my sister actually moved back from Italy and uh, they were living here as well for a while. So that was, it worked out because yeah, at first you, no one wants to move back home with their parents, but uh, th- there's definitely benefits to it. Do you have to pay rent? Money. No, luckily I don't, but... You have to cook dinner a, every night? I help them with their business. They have a... We have a family business, so I help them with uh, certain things. What's the family business? It's a flooring store. Dave means flooring. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so I did their website, do some of their marketing, anything that technical they need. Very cool. When, when you are a nobody and you're trying to convince someone to get on your platform to have a conversation with you, to email you back, 
how do you do it? What's the strategy on, on getting someone to look at you, sign up, talk to you, email you back when, when you don't have any credibility yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Definitely having that connection, uh, like at least someone that they know, like if it's you or if it's um, you know different community leaders in the area that I know, just having that in is always helpful. But if not, um, I've been using this tool called Use Loom. And it's basically, it's, it's like a video email service. So you just do a video, you can do a, a, a screen as well, but I just do the camera and you just send a link and you can say, you know, just do a quick personalized message and it doesn't embed in the video. So it just sends a link and you can actually see when they view and it, it always, I, I always get a response. It's, it's pretty crazy because people are never expecting a personalized video like, hey Zach, uh, I'm Ryan Dean. I just want to reach out to you because I heard about this. I just want to talk to you about something. Are you, you know, blah, blah, interested. That's great. I'll talk to you soon. You use loom.com. Yeah. And that's been good. Even using it with our new members, once they sign up mm. and saying, Hey, if you're working on anything particular, feel free to invite me in. If you're looking for specific resources, you know, don't be afraid to. I, I always think that people, I don't know if you heard, me ever say anything about like throwing a party and people want people to, to show up to a party and to get them to come nowadays people think that all you have to do is post something on Facebook I'm having a party or throw up an event right or meetup.com and say oh I'm having a party I want you to come or an event or whatever it is but I, I remember this because I was thinking about college um, you know you have to reminisce sometimes it's been a long time since I've been there oh it's, I haven't been in college in 10 years wow um, I am old my friend I am old uh, but anyway, I used to throw these parties and to get people, Facebook wasn't huge yet. My space was still like the big thing. Um, but to get people, I had to get their phone numbers. I had to text them. I had to call them and be like, yo, I want you to come because I charged people for these parties and I, you know, I wanted them to come to, to the events and whatnot. And I, I love that personalized message that you're doing because I think a lot of people just push something out and they're like, Hey, come to my thing. And then no one shows up and they're like, well, why didn't anyone come? I'm like, you, you have to bust your tail and get that, like, give that person a reason. So we have a big event coming up and I'm about to get on the phone and call like 200 people and be like, yo, I want you there. Yo, I want you there. Yo, I want you there. And yes, you can do emails. Yes, you can do tweets and Facebooks and stuff like that. But those don't work the same way as picking up the phone and doing that. And so I love the personalized piece. Uh, I was talking to Douglas Burdett on my TV show. He has a, um, a podcast called The Marketing Book Podcast. And I asked him a similar question to you, like when you're getting started, how do you get people to listen to you? And he said that he created a, like a 10 minute or um, uh, for the first 10 people he wanted on the show, a video for them saying, hey, I'm Douglas Burdett. I want you to be, I'm starting the marketing book podcast. I want you to be on the show. So I, I think that's brilliant. And I wish more people would actually put in the work because I think at the end of the day, people are like, oh, how come I'm not here yet? And it's like, you're like 10 seconds into this. Like you, you got a lot of, a lot of work to do. What do you suck at? Uh, you don't, suck you at... don't have to name everything. Just maybe a couple. Yeah. It's, let me see. Let me narrow it down to one. Um, let's see. Sometimes talking myself up, like when it's the right opportunity, like, you know, uh, if there's someone that's saying, oh yeah, I, I'm looking for this and. You know, I don't like to talk myself up really. Like, in, like I guess with sales. Um, so so like talking yourself up, talking yourself up from a promotional standpoint, like, hey, I'm Ryan Dean. I have Dream Remain. It's a tool that's I've for done you. all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, like, I don't like to throw out my credentials at people, yeah. and that's you know, people are like exactly what you said. Like, how do you gain that credibility? It's like I don't like to dunk it. I've worked with all these people. I've done, you know, I've built stuff from nothing. Because you, you don't want to be that guy. Life. Or girl, yeah, right. Where they're just mm -hmm. like, oh, look at everything. Yeah. Like I'm throwing money out, like because it does suck. But sometimes you do need to have that credibility check. Exactly. So it's and that's kind of my weakness is trying to to get that across to people, and I guess that salesmanship of not being too showy, but uh, being it where it's authentic. Very cool. What? Um, so knowing that you are not strong at that, what are some ways that you have seen yourself improve? over the last, I don't know, six months, and what specifically did you do to try and fix that? I guess really trying to provide value, like when I see the people, rather than convince myself, like, okay, I'm being showy, it's more like, 
okay, how can you provide value to this person? Uh, it's not, you know, talking yourself up. It's not being too um, in their face, but focus on the value for them that you can build. And then that's actually helped me like, okay, it's, it's really asking them questions to help them out. It's not saying anything about that. Because then I'll tie in, okay, like, what are you doing in this area? What are you doing in that? Oh, I've actually had experience in this. I'm not, you know, pulling it in. Um, so that's been good. But, uh, it's hard. Oh, right? yeah. I, I, and I, like, you probably will be shocked to hear this, but I, I don't love to toot my own horn either because I, I've been at meetings where people are like, oh, there's that guy. Like, not me specifically, but like someone like saying, oh, you know, this is what all this person's done. And, but you have to do it sometimes. And so, like, I, I try and throw, like, some silly things in there, too, to say, like, I have a little personality. So, like, in my bio, it says something like, the mayor of Hustle City. And it's just in there. But people love to say that. And, and so maybe you could use this technique, too. Because by throwing something in there that then you can add your context to. So people don't understand what the mayor of Hustle City is. You know, people are like, oh, so what does that mean? You, like, you work 24-7. And I'm like... No, it just means that if I want an outcome to happen, I have to create that outcome. I have to, you know, create that action. And they're like, oh. And so it allows me to ultimately say, hey, like I'm busting my tail to get somewhere in life. And it opens up this conversation by saying something funny, right? It's kind of started off as a joke, um, but it's turned into something that I think has allowed me to early on in a conversation um, give context. If it's... Mark Zuckerberg, you know, it used to be CEO and then witch with a B. Um, because this show does not allow cuss words. And we're going to keep that so that it doesn't get the explicit little thing. And I don't think with you, Ryan Dean, you would want that. So what's something about you that people don't know about? Or that you think they should? I play the piano. Is what's, that what's something? You, does does that sure? count? Sure. What's your favorite song to play? Uh, a lot of it's self-taught too. Like, so I'm not like the. Do you do you actually prodigy. learn anything, or you just do everything on your own? Because I'm starting to hear that you self-teach yourself a lot. A lot, yeah. A lot of stuff is self-taught. Um, I've definitely learned from you know certain classes, um, but yeah, a lot of stuff. If I'm interested, I'm just like, okay, yeah. I I don't like to sometimes start with the like the foundation, if I already know from the other stuff, like I've kind of freeze to it and just, if I want to learn, a, uh, have a specific outcome. Um, like I, you know, I, at first when I started learning the piano, I just wanted to wow people and be like, oh yeah, he can play the piano. <laughs> so I'd pick something easy, like a, a modern song. I think I learned, what did I learn? I can't even think of the one I did back in the day. Did you go to but, college? Uh, yeah, ODU. You did? Actually, Old Dominion. Mm -hmm. Uh, bachelor's degree? Nope, I actually left uh, junior year. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about college? So I, it sounds like you are one that can learn on their own, can learn by doing, can learn by you know YouTube University or 1004, whatever it might be. Like, do you think college in its current form will be around in five, ten years? I hope not. <laughs> why i hope i hope it changes uh my whole thing with why i left was i was very active in my school and i, I love college is one of the greatest things that i did and had the opportunity to do um, when i was leaving high school i didn't think i was actually gonna go to college senior year didn't even wasn't even on my mind and then all my friends started going i was like oh they're all getting into school what am i gonna do and so i applied to ODU and luckily got in and it was great. It's like just the resources and the connections you make, it's, it lasts a long time. But my whole thing was I was active in the community of the student body, different organizations. I started a club for a, a local nonprofit at the school. And I was doing, you know, great in my exams and tests, but I failed one of my semesters because of participation and attendance. And that kind of drove me wild. Because I understood, like, yeah, you need to have certain rules. But at the end of the day, I was, you know, paying for it. And if I was being active and I just wasn't attending every class. But you were still doing well in the class on their grading scale? On their grading scale, yeah. yeah. But as far as attendance, it's like, oh, if you miss three classes, you're, it goes down a grade letter. I'm just like, that's, 
cloud. So that's why I left and did a online. And I did Arizona State University, uh, Technological Entrepreneurship and Management for a little bit. And that was great at first. It worked with my schedule. But then at the same time, it kind of it got to the point where I was working full time in Alexandria and taking classes. And the guy was, uh, one of the classes actually required me to basically be in the class every day. So it's like, what's the point of doing it online? I had to write something every night and actually participate in the class online. I was like, first semesters, two semesters were fantastic. I was like, so I, I messaged the dean of the, uh, the community. I messaged my advisor first and then helped me out. Then I messaged the dean because it wasn't, it was like, you guys built this to work with people's schedule and this doesn't work. <laughs> Like, I don't understand. I, I just think that college, I love college. I love education, right? I love connecting people. I love learning new things. I, one of the reasons why I do this show is to learn from other people, right? And f- then to be a distribution platform for other people to learn from, from people as well. I don't think college is ultimately preparing you from the things that they teach you in the classroom a lot of times. And I know that several of the things that I learned, I have a journalism degree. A lot of things that I learned in the journalism school up until maybe my last semester had nothing to do with actually what I was going to do once I got out. Right. And so here I am being taught something. And then 10 years later, everything's on this. Right. And so we like, it's just, I, it, people always talk about schools being 10, 15 years behind yet. We're supposed to be giving them so much money and they're not even really preparing us. It's yeah, it's um, a, yeah. it's a wild world. That's what always drove me crazy, like my teacher for business, and especially growing up around the family business, like a lot of stuff I already knew, which I, it's not like I'm trying to be like snobby about it and like throw people's faces. Yeah, but I was like, I, I know family business, stuff. yeah. I was like, I grew up around it, like it's all I know. So I was like, Do you own a business? Have you ever ran a business? You're teaching me this, and like you, it's coming from a book, and it, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but have you actually done this? No. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you ever heard me, but I preach that a lot. So and I, I think that's, you don't go to a dentist and ask them an accounting question. Why do you go to like that? When you ask someone business questions, they should have business thoughts. You know, I've never had a company with thousands of people, so I'm not going to give any kind of context or answers on that. What's your favorite day of the week? Day of the week. It's a tough one. Wednesday for some reason. Okay. What do you do on Wednesday. Wednesdays? Uh, I have this mastermind group I'm in online for people around the world. That's pretty amazing. Okay. Um, got to connect with that. But I mean, as an entrepreneur, I mean, you kind of get to pick which days are Friday. So, um, like, when everyone says, oh, it's Friday, I'm like, awesome. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what day of the week it is today. Yeah. I was right. actually looking. It's like, is it Wednesday? But it's not. It's not. I don't know what that is. It's like my Monday. Yeah. Mondays are my favorite days because everyone else hates them. And I'm like, whew. Yeah, it sucks that you it sucks to suck, people. Like Mondays are awesome. Like there is no case of the Mondays. Like it's it's great. How how do you say no? Are can you do it? Are you good at it? Depends. Depends on the situation. Yeah. So if someone if you know that if someone calls you and says, Hey, I, I want to have a meeting with you. Do you always say yes? Yeah, I'm kind of guilty of that. Depends on the situation. Okay. Um, Do you feel like you it, should be saying no? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes for sure. And I've gotten better at it, definitely. At first, when you're starting out and you want to gain that sure. you know, credibility, and you're like, oh, someone wants to talk to me about you know, something they're doing, and they're, you know, maybe this can tie into DreamerMate. Yeah, let me take the meeting. And at first, that was always the case, especially when we went to Tech Day. We went to this event. Uh, and we had our our website and information on this on their platform and so all these companies are contacting us like hey are you interested in this are you interested in our service and i was like okay i'll take the call but then i realized it's like i just took five calls today and i didn't need a single thing like that didn't help me at all get to what i'm trying to do and that was big for me um so that's how because that's their outreach sales team that's basically saying oh you're a new business you need our tool so you fell for it you fell for their game yep i did What's a pet peeve of yours? No, a pet peeve. Oh, people who, like, they say they want to do something and they want to, they're like, oh, I have, like, if they have an idea, like, oh, I want to do this, I want to create something, but they're not willing to put in the work or they're not even willing to, like, I'll be like, awesome, that sounds amazing. 
I'll, you know, if you want some help with that, if you want to invite me in your project, if you want, you know, some resources I can give you to get on the right step, like yeah. on the right path. And if they, they don't take it and they just like, I don't want to do the work. That's definitely a tough for you. I'll talk, no walk. What's on your bucket list? List. Oh, I should check this. It's changed. It's been updated. Um, I want to travel the world. I haven't. Yeah, you know, I want to go to. I've never been to Europe. That's definitely on my bucket list. I want to jump out of a plane. I did that. I what was that plane. like? Is that scary as crap. At first, and then like for the first two seconds, you're terrified. And then you're like, I'm going to die. And then you're like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> so how long are you, part, yeah. how long um, are you actually but, free falling for? I'm not sure. I think it's it's a minute and a half, maybe like 90 seconds. A free fall before Dep- you pull the parachute? Depending on the height you're up. Like if you're wow. higher up, like, um, I think it's 90 seconds, something like that. But then it's like seven minutes of like floating around. The scariest part is actually when they pull the chute and you like, it jerks you. Um, that's the, I thought it was the scariest part. And you're like, okay. That, because it, you're like, is it going to work? Is it, is it not? But uh, You have tandem? Slip out. You had a tandem? Yeah, I did tandem. So I just added Are you going to slip out? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that old woman video that's up there that you see the lady falling out. It's terrifying. But they like they get her, but she slips out of her harness. I'm just like, oh. Oh, thanks. <laughs> now that's what I'm going to think about. Oh, because <laughs> that's on my bucket list. You should definitely do it. Yeah. I'm actually going tomorrow because I actually put on my list to um, get certified because I want to jump in Dubai. I've watched the videos out there. and I The just 4K go. Dubai, like where they jump off those. Oh, yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Like I, I want to do that. So I'm actually uh, – I already did the ground school and everything. So I just have to do my first jump. That's cool. So, what, so tomorrow, um, have like, you, have okay. you seen the wingsuit guys? Yeah. It's pretty Oh, that's wild. So was, There's one good. where guys actually landed on water. What? I haven't yeah. seen that one. Now they're, um, uh, I saw one the other day where they're uh, going into planes. Yeah, I saw that. that. Yeah, it's well, like they, actually next to jets and stuff. It's... Yeah, so there's one where I guess they like land into a plane, but the guy hits his leg onto the, the side of the plane. So I'm like, they're going 160 miles an hour. Doesn't he hurt himself? But then I'm like, I'm wondering if, and I, I'm not a physicist or I don't know if that's even what this is, but if you're going the same speed as that, then maybe it doesn't hurt because there is a guy who hit something like a, just like a tree limb and shattered his knee. So I'm like, okay, what's the difference? So it's gotta be the speed to speed piece. Yeah. I'm the wrong person for that question. Come on, Ryan. Uh, how do you set a goal? So how do you put the things on your bucket list? Um, stuff that really like, I don't know. I want to do it's, it's been over the years and I should actually really look at it again but stuff that scares me like especially with the skydiving I try to break it up into um, like personal stuff and then stuff for my business and like mm-hmm. stuff for my family like I want to be able to to go on a family trip somewhere like, like exotic with the whole family and one day maybe be able to pay for everyone to go yeah like that one time <laughs> I think that would be cool but uh, really just seeing stuff like that maybe other people haven't done or that people are kind of scared of to kind of separate, not kind of separate you from other people. Sure. Okay, have you say, oh, I have that experience. You know? Millennials get a bad rep for being entitled, don't want to work very hard, whatever it might be, wanting participation trophies, whatever it is. What do you, what are your thoughts on millennials? You are one. I'm one. What's your overall thought on them? Are, are we are we misunderstood? Is there truth to what people are saying? What, what do you think? I think it has its. It's true, like what some people say, but I think it's the same with every generation. There's the ones that don't want to work, but or they say, oh, they're always sitting and playing on their their devices, and it's like, yeah, but it's actually working. Like, when I'm on my phone, people think, oh, he's playing a game or something. I'm like, I'm sending emails, <laughs> I'm responding to you know problems, uh, and putting out fires, all that stuff. Like, I'm not just playing on Facebook. I'm doing something for my business. Sure. So I think it's definitely misunderstood in some areas, but there. Just like any other generation, there's lazy people. There's people that don't want to work. They want to take the easy way out. They want everything given to them. Sure. Yeah, I know that when I'm on Facebook, it's typically for business. And it's typically having a conversation with someone, whether I'm posting something, uploading a video, or having a one-on-one conversation with a current customer or someone that I'm trying to have as a current customer. Um, 
it, it's it's something that people don't get because if they're not owning a business, they're just like, this is what I do. I'm on Facebook and I'm talking to people. And I'm like, no, actually, like there, there's merit to me actually doing this. So maybe I should be on here. If, if someone is thinking about a project, starting a business or doing something differently, how do they get going on that? What do you mean about doing something differently? So I'm doing something different than they do today. So whether it's breaking up with a, a significant other, whether it's starting a business, closing a business, um, starting a project, do, do, you know, setting a, a new list of uh, whatever, just doing something completely different than they're used to be doing. How, what, what are, how do they start doing that? I mean, really, it's, it's depends on the goal, like and what it means to you. Like, you know, um, really, with me, like I, that's why we drew me. I tried to create a framework to create and reach a goal and break it down to steps. So I was like, you know, there's going to be a lot of things people want to do. So I, I kind of do that in my own life too. So if I have a goal that I'm working on, I kind of picture it with that framework. Okay. I have this goal. Is there a specific reason I'm trying to do it? Is it you know, just for myself? Is it for someone else? Whatever it is. And then kind of break it down. Like, okay, what's the time frame? I'm in, I was in project management and stuff. So, it's just how I work. I like all the details beforehand. Yeah. Um, and then I like to like map it all out. Like, okay, when does this need to be done? What's pressing for it? Is there something else that has to be done before this need? Because I don't think, I don't think it matters what it is. I think using that framework is important, right? And knowing, you know, setting that expectation. It doesn't matter if it's just doing something different, right? And so it doesn't matter if you're breaking up with a significant other, starting something new, stopping something, jumping out of a plane. Like you do have to know most of the time what that framework is, what that process is, what that playbook looks like. And I think that's that's important. What's something about Dreamer made that you want to happen that hasn't been able to happen yet? Or a challenge with Dreamer made that you are trying to get through and but it just you just can't do it. one big project on there that the community can jump on to see like the scale of what it can do. I really love to have that. Um, to, you know, if there's something going on, a crisis, you know, like with like the wildfires in California, something like that, having it up there where everyone can jump on board and actually say, Oh, what about this? You know, I've thought about this idea, but I've never actually, I never knew where to put it. I never knew who to send it to if they would listen to me. But having something where it can actually solve a problem just by the collaborative you know, community. Everyone up there using their skills. So do you want me to um, you want me to help you with this? Sure, that'd be amazing. All right, Give so me. here's your to-do. Go set that up and call some people in California. Yeah. I mean, like... The reason I say this is, and I asked a, uh, a life coach, a business coach the other day, something similar, uh, Tracy Davis, episode 67 of the 1004 show. It was actually the, the one uh, just before yours. And, and he, I, I asked him what's on his bucket list. He says, I want to learn Spanish or German. And I said, why haven't you done it yet? Because it's not a hard thing to do if you think about it, right? Like you have to learn how to do something, right? That's not, that's not something that people have never done before. Right, it's just to start doing it, and so I, with your case, you want to get this new tool, this new platform, this new framework in front of people to help them with it. I think if you could just start getting this in front of certain people that are posting on Facebook about the wildfires all the time that live out there, you could see you could see that uptick. And I don't know if you're afraid to do it. I don't know that if it's just the unknown, but it sounds like that's something that could be very valid. Um, and and I'm gonna encourage you. To, to do that and within the next few days few weeks i'm gonna figure out where you are on it because yeah, you know for the millions of people that are listening and watching you know they're gonna they're gonna go to dreamermade.com backslash california wildflowers and they're gonna look for wildfires not flowers uh and they're going they're gonna look for it and but mm -hmm. like you, we just can't say these things right like well, i want this crazy audacious thing well i gotta go after it mm -hmm. right i want a hundred thousand people i want to help a hundred thousand businesses that's a lot, right? So you have to have a ton of conversations. You have to get a lot of people on there. You want to help the fires in California, mm -hmm. you know, go after it. Dreamermade.com is the website. Ryan Dean, episode 68 of the 1004 show. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it, Zach.
Pleasure. Pleasure.